circular economy, bioeconomy on a global level. And uh, many countries and regions around the world have put in place strategies and plans to foster just a, such a just transition. Can you, Yuka, share with us insights on efforts being made at the global level? And what are the issues which are emerging from that? Yeah, with the pleasure, uh, Stefan, and uh, thanks for your introduction. And very exciting question you are posing on me. And, uh, and first of all, I'd like to thank the UNIDO on this opportunity to come here and then in what's about to get the bioeconomy in a global level. Um, maybe a few words first about that, okay, what's World Bioeconomy Forum? Um, actually, I'm the founder of it, uh, together with some co-founders from Indonesia and uh, from UK. This initiative took place in uh, 2018. 2018, that, okay, uh, uh, we thought that there need to be a global platform where the issues related to bioeconomy can be discussed and we can learn from each other. And the first, let's say, conference we organized, it was okay, uh, uh, in September 2018, so this is not the fifth edition. We think that our mission is that, okay, um, to um, enhance and okay, uh, facilitate the okay, circular bioeconomy, and we do that worldwide. And how do we do that? We are organizing the events related to okay, the bioeconomy, where we are asking the stakeholders of the bioeconomy to tell in their story, to tell in their narrative, as we heard today. But we are doing that very systematic way. We do have a four-pillar system by which we are always evaluating the status of the bio bioeconomy. So we are organizing this kind of public event. You are all welcome to this event. Besides that, we do have a members, and for the members, we are organizing okay, the membership events as we call it, okay, World Bioeconomy Circle, and you are all uh, welcome to join that initiative, to be part of that, uh, that okay, uh, movement. And finally, okay, certainly we are then, okay, providing, okay, some advisory services on this field, as we are anyhow engaged fully on this, this topic. But when it comes to your question, uh, what i like to evaluate here a bit, that, okay, uh, what's the status of the bioeconomy? in terms of the biostrategies. You know, biostrategies are evolving. That's point number one. The second thing I would like to make here is that, okay, you know, bioeconomy, I dare to share, will come one of the major stream in the future. Also in terms of economics. We hear also here good examples, but I, I, will, I will, let's say, okay, stop on that topic for a while because it's always the case when you are building up the okay, sustainable economies, they need to stand on their own feet. That goes along also for the bioeconomy. Third point I'd like to make here is okay, what was partially discussed here is about okay, bioeconomy's role on climate change mitigation. What does it mean? What type of tools does the, okay, the bioeconomy build, uh, bring into this game? It's very typical while we are here in the COP. And then uh, finally, uh, okay, um, there's more and more discussion. Is bioeconomy enough? It's a matter enough that it deserves to have a global home. There's more and more discussion on that, that topic. Okay, getting to okay, the first point. Uh, you know, okay, biostrategies are evolving. And what do we mean by it is that, okay, uh, today there's all, already, okay, over 50 biostrategies worldwide national biostrategies. And on top of that, there are also countless number of, let's say, okay, regional biostrategies. It was referred also in this discussion. It's very important that we are having also regional biostrategies. Then you are taking into account, okay, okay, local circumstances and how well you are then, okay, benefiting this uh, in a sustainable way. It is always a must. On top of that, on top of that, there are also biostrategies which are sort of accredited okay, uh, biostrategies. Like, okay, EU is having the biostrategy, uh, and also, okay, uh, there's an East African Union to have it, okay, let's say combined biostrategies. We need them all. We need them all. A number of these biostrategies are ever, incre ever increasing. As we heard today about, okay, the bio-based strategy it is now about to be conducted here in Egypt. 
So congratulations on this initiative. And I'd like to use this opportunity to invite Egypt to our next round table, which will be held on April. On April. So well, we would like to see, uh, see you there and uh, like to hear your story. What is your position at that point of time? The, during the last half a year, there has been okay, several other biosynthesis which has been that, okay, unfolded. Uh, for example, Finland. Okay, I'm coming from Finland. I didn't say that because of that. But nevertheless, they uh, okay, um, launched the biosynthesis in April. And, and that was already an update. The original, they had that from 2014. China is also having a biosynthesis. They announced it that in May. So this uh, let's say superpowers are very active on this space. East African Union came up with the gate by in June, um, and EU let's say celebrate it on 10th year. It is actually 10 years, not okay, 20 years. It's 10 years anniversary, and they celebrated that okay last last summer. And also US came on this uh, let's say space by announcing the okay, executive order uh, in September. Uh, to advance, to advance okay, the biotechnology and biomanufacturing. So a lot of things are cooking up in this space. And for the next year, okay, Egypt is there in place. We do know the Sweden is there in place. So all these things are then, then evolving. Now, when we have a look about the contents, can you drive any sort of, let's say, uh, conclusions on this uh, bio strategy? So, um, <laughs> Uh, I would say so that okay, the first of all, that okay, the bio strategies are getting more holistic, more holistic. There used to be a time that you are focusing on the certain, let's say, like on the technology, like on the biotechnology. It's not anymore the case. You certainly have that, but then then it's also that okay, that you are having more holistic approach, meaning that okay, you are taking into account also the supply chains, bio-based supply chains. That's one one trend. What do we see there? Uh, secondly, um, there is a okay, notion that okay, the uh, bio strategies are getting that direction that they are uh, to do, uh, let's say, more with less. So focusing on the okay, value added products. That is at least the case in Finland, partially also in the okay, EU bio strategy. And third, thirdly, that, okay, I would like to say that, okay, that this societal matters do account, do account. If you now have a look on this okay, uh, uh, bio strategy in, in Brazil, uh, you know, Para State, okay, do have that. It's a good example. I, 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 I would then welcome you to visit that. What does it then mean? So, the, okay, uh, the, the rights of the Indonesian people, how we ensure that, and all that, okay, traditional okay, knowledge, how to okay, compress that all into this bio strategy. So, these are all, all really important aspects. Now, okay, um, how do we do in the, okay, in the okay, World Bioeconomy Forum? Uh, this, uh, someone might say that the okay, bioeconomy is, is complex. It is. Um, but we are explaining that through the four pillar structure. That's what I mentioned at the beginning, that we have a systematic approach. It is comparable that, okay, if you are in the business world or any kind of organization, if you are driving your strategy, Typically, first thing to do, what you do, you have a SWOT analysis, which is giving you a position that, okay, where do you stand? We are having the same for the bioeconomy. We call it as a four pillar structure. And within these four pillars, we are evaluating the status of the bioeconomy. So it can be measured. And we are repeating these four pillars always in our programs. Now, no, what are then, okay, the four pillars? The first pillar is about uh, the bioeconomy people planet policies there we are typically inviting the regulators policy makers that okay uh, what are their actions in this field how do they facilitate the developments of the okay, bioeconomy we all know that that's not enough that you are only ruling out that okay you should go in this direction it doesn't work like that it always requires um, business world engagement and that's the reason that okay, we have named the second pillar as the corporate leaders and the financial world, where we are inviting, let's say, okay, big and small company, okay, heads of them to tell them that, okay, what does it mean to navigate in this space? What kind of challenges, what kind of lessons can be then learned? And then the financial world. 
and and then the third pillar is also very important as that they people do not necessarily know that well what do we mean by okay, the bio bioeconomy what are the products so that's the reason that, okay we have named this uh, third pillar as that, okay bio product or us where we are making showcases that what kind of products and services does this sector provide and then finally the fourth pillar it's more the okay, societal matters like education what kind of skills do we need and we have named that as okay look into the future and as we are organizing the okay, year long let's say okay programs we are taking the okay, specific theme for the each season this season we have a theme as world bioeconomy forum talks about climate and that's okay that's the reason we are here because we were learning about that okay what does it then mean what is the contribution of okay the byproducts so that's that's about okay the one uh, first message. I have three more here. Be patient. So, they, uh, okay, this, uh, the second message uh, what I like to uh, provide, as I stated, you know, bioeconomy, that's my claim. Bioeconomy will become one of the major streams in the future, also economically. You know, um, uh, the, let's say, okay, value of the all global economical activities is 100 trillion US dollar, 100 trillion US dollar. Now, there is a notion that, okay, the value of the, okay, the bioeconomy will account one third of the all global uh, uh, activities, economical activities. In other words, it's 30 trillion. This is, by the way, the basis for the US executive order. And they say that very loud and clear, and they are working on it. And they are not alone. As we heard here now, okay, Egypt is saying that, okay, the value of the bit, okay, Egypt bioeconomy will be 54 billion US dollar. And like the okay, Japan is saying that, okay, they are, they are now about, okay, increasing, okay, the bioeconomy value by 50%, by 50%, okay, by 2030. So uh, it's, it's everywhere. So uh, this, okay, the economics need to be taken into account. The third message and I'm delivering here is that, okay, what's the role of the bioeconomy uh, in the climate change mitigation? You know, uh, we revisited that uh, topic uh, during this, this season. And uh, what we can say is that, okay, that uh, bioproducts are not incorporated in climate change mitigation, at least in terms of a regulatively compliance market nor voluntary carbon market. Still, like here in this panel, we are talking about, okay, yeah, okay, bioproducts do account. They are uh, mitigating climate change. But I'm afraid that's only talk in case it's not written in this, okay, carbon market. It's not written in the okay, with the when it comes to, okay, uh, compliance, okay, uh, regulative, um, or regulative compliance market. So, uh, but, uh, how the bioproducts are then of bioeconomy to affect on the climate change mitigation? Let's say um, it's all our, let's say written now in our under the declaration. I don't read them all. I like to make two points of that. Uh, first of all, when you are making the okay, bioproducts, okay, you are superseding the okay, the fossil based uh, products. So there's a substitution effect. You, it's you, you got the awesome. last time that you make sub points. You have your third point. You have now two <laughs> sub points after the second point. Is okay. 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 Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So, okay. The substitution effect. So uh, that is the way. And our proposal here, our proposal here is that, okay, when we are talking about carbon credit market, one day, it's also our dream that, okay, the carbon credit should be adhered also to bioproducts. So it will give a boost for okay, the need of the, okay, the bio uh, products. Finally, this is my final word. <laughs> so that, okay, yeah. so uh, uh, there's more and more discussion. What I like to share here, you uh, uh, like it, okay, this, uh, is bioeconomy now, let's say, mature enough that is then, okay, deserving to have in a global home. We were talking like in this, uh, let's say, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, panel about it, okay, what about it, okay, product acceptances, what about the legislation, and this kind of topic is not only here in Egypt, it's everywhere the very same. And now when we compare this, okay, the role of the bioeconomy, 
in related to okay, climate change mitigation. There is a home for a climate change mitigation, and it's called Peace Hop, as we are here. And it's already, this is not the 27th round of it, and so there is a sort of meaningful convention where the issues are agreed in the global level, and the nations are then following that, and then finally the, okay, the uh, companies and okay, the individuals, it's having an effect. And then it is, okay, there's also okay, the biodiversity, which is okay, uh, having a COP where the issues are discussed. These are the okay, two older brothers or sisters. The bioeconomy belongs to the same family, but it doesn't have a voice yet. So that's the reason that okay, this will be then discussed. So uh, with these words, <laughs> with these four points, uh, that is then okay, the status of the bioeconomy. So thanks, Stefan. Do you have uh, more questions? No, I, I just, uh, actually I do. Uh, first, I would like to, to thank you for, um, for clothing so nicely with uh, back to the conference that we had.